Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV with your Super Bowl 58 Fade the Public Edition. I'm going to break down the side and total in deep detail for you. I'm going to let you know where the public is on both the side and total. And the public is pretty involved with both of them. That's coming up free for you in a moment. And also going to look at some of the public props and where we go with them or fade them in this Super Bowl edition of Fade the Public. Once again, if you're new to the video here, I do this every week during the regular season. We take the most public sides. Also did it during the playoffs. We're going to do it a little different here during the Super Bowl for a few reasons. First of all, it's just one game. We only have one side in total. I will get to those in a moment. So I'm going to add a little bit of prop talk as well. But I want you to do me a favor. If you've enjoyed this video all season long, first of all, give it a thumbs up, a like. Make sure you've hit subscribe and you hit that bell for instant alerts so you will know when my March Madness fade the public videos go up here in a month or so with College Hoops. But also comment below. I read all the comments. I reply back. I love the support. We have a great community here on Wager Talk TV. So a couple of different topics we can talk about. First of all, obviously include your prediction for the game, your best bets, your player props, your game props themselves, and throw in some analysis as well. But also include your favorite team in the NFL. I just realized, I want to see, I know a lot of you by now, but I don't know who you all root for. So maybe your favorite Super Bowl memory as well, if you have a favorite team. A lot of the Wager Talk office is in Detroit, so obviously they don't have a Super Bowl memory. i got to be honest, I would have liked to see the Lions in this game. would have been pretty exciting. But nonetheless, comment below. I read all the comments and I reply back. And also, your favorite Super Bowl appetizer and what you're doing for the Super Bowl, if you have any parties going. Let's comment below, let's reply back, and let's all win together here on this Super Bowl Sunday. All right, let's get right to it. The most public play in Super Bowl 58 is ding, 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 red flag alert, public dog. And by the way, I'm wearing the red. Chiefs and Niners, so really neutral there. But I'll get to my prediction also for you in a moment. But the public is on the underdog Chiefs. Not a surprise for several reasons. First of all, 49ers really fortunate to be in this spot. They were outplayed for the majority of the Packer and Lion games, definitely in the first half. Slow starts in both of those. But they found a way to come back and win. So two ways to look at that. They were sluggish or they were good enough to overcome double de de big double-digit deficit in that Detroit game. Actually recovering late until the – Backdoor cover by the Lions uh, really was a remarkable front door cover by the Niners there for a moment. Meanwhile, the Chiefs back to back impressive underdog wins at Buffalo and Baltimore. So, really, two teams heading in here in opposite directions. So, I can understand why the public likes the Chiefs as a dog. Um, I don't think there's a lot of Taylor Swifty money necessarily on the Chiefs. That probably doesn't hurt the public sentiment on them. But more importantly, we have the Mahomes and Andy Reid factor as well. First of all, I lean towards the Niners in this game. I do think we fade the public here, and this is also a sharp square divide situation. Um, if you saw the line open around two a week and a half ago, it quickly came down to one. Yet then last week, up to two, even two and a half at the Westgate, and Arthur DeCesar, by the way, was on Wager Talk Today with us this past Friday, Teddy Covers and myself hosting, and Art said they got a couple six-figure bets from sharp, respected bettors last week earlier in the week on the Niners, and that's why they went to two and a half. And if you check the Wager Talk live odd screen all week, most books were at minus two, but you'd notice the Westgate in Las Vegas, the Superbook, was holding steady at two and a half, the highest number out there. I don't think this line gets to three, though, uh, for a couple reasons. First of all, it takes a lot of money to move it to the key number of three. It's the most key number, of course, in all of sports betting. And then the second reason is because, once again, the public is on the Niners. And keep in mind, the public normally comes in on the weekend not only in Vegas, but also across the country in the recreational books, all the legal books in 30 different states now. And I do think we'll see more Kansas City money. So as I do this video on Saturday afternoon, we're seeing twos across the board. By the way, the Superbook is now back down to minus two. Circa in Las Vegas is down to minus one and a half, which once again shows we're not going to get that key number of three. Let's look at the total here. The public is on the over as well. Not a surprise. The public normally leans over in games as well. If this was a regular season game, I'd call it a public lean. The Chiefs are a public dog. That would have made the video during the regular season, so that is the most public play in Super Bowl 58 is the Chiefs plus two. But once again, an additional public lean on the over in this game. And this one is interesting. It's held 47 and a half basically since the opener a week and a half ago. And we've seen some indications maybe it would go to 48. We saw some sports books this week, some of the leading indicator books, juice it to over minus 115. But here as of Saturday afternoon, a little more than 24 hours before the game, Everywhere across the board, at least on the Wager Talk Live odd screen, is still 47 and a half. Uh, but once again, the public is leaning towards the over. And with more public money coming in this weekend, I would expect that over to climb. I do think the Sharps often look for the under in the Super Bowl. So once it hits 48, if it hits 48, we might see a buyback down again. So this could close 47 and a half or lower, depending on where the heavy sharp money is. But once again, the public lean is on the over. 
If you like the over, you probably want to play the 47 and a half as it likely will hit 48, in my opinion, sometime this weekend, probably on Sunday afternoon. Um, I actually lean over. I agree with the public in this one. I think it will be a higher scoring game than expected. Keep in mind, these teams played a year ago in the regular season. San Francisco lost at home, uh, really got blown out in the second half of that game. But the offenses moved the ball at will. There are over 750 combined passing yards by the Chiefs and the Niners last year. Garoppolo played the majority of that game. That was before Purdy. He did come in and finish and then played later into the season, obviously. Uh, Mahomes had a nice game. Kansas City has been a little weaker offensively this year. They've been a better defensive team. Uh, but Super Bowls historically have a tendency to be a little higher scoring than you expect. Uh, the DCS championship games, we talk about this in college football as well. Because when a team gets down, they often start to press. and We often get that late non-touchdown, a non-offensive touchdown score, a turnover or a kick return or an interception. It hasn't happened as much in recent years because now we're in the competitive era of Super Bowls. But when I started in the 80s and 90s, most of those Super Bowls are blowouts. And of course, most of them were double-digit favorites. Over the last 14 years, every point spread has been six or less, including this season. So blowout factor, a little less of an issue, but still these championship games do have a tendency to be a little higher scoring than you would think. Uh, so I don't disagree with the public on the over here. Uh, once again, public on the Kansas City Chiefs, a public dog, and they're also leaning over for Super Bowl Sunday. Hey, comment below. Let me know where you agree or disagree with the public and whether game, other, other ways you're looking to play this game um, as far as the props go. And we're going to get to the props here in just a moment. Some of the more public props that you might want to be careful with here in a second. Quick reminder, though, I've had a great football season. In fact, going back to the mid of the preseason, middle of August, over five months ago, number one ranked in the NFL. Actually, that's six months ago. Man, I'm losing track of time. Back to early August, six months ago, over half a year, number one ranked in NFL sides. Since then, nobody has won more units in the NFL sides than I have. And I do have my Super Bowl package up this Sunday, which includes all the props as well. It's a huge package. It's, it's an all-in-one. You're going to get everything in one package, all my prop bets. I'm also going to include my side and total recommendation, which I kind of mentioned here. They're not official best bets, but once again, um, I want everyone to have access to the side in total. But the props are where the money is, in my opinion, here in Super Bowl 58. And that one-day special is available on my page for Sunday, SteveMerrillWagerTalk.com. By the way, don't forget about basketball. I know we're talking about the NFL, but this is the last game of the season. There'll be no football for another six months until next August. Basketball, though, is where you can make some serious money. That is your daily moneymaker here for the next several months until, of course, baseball starts in April. And I've been seeing basketball well. In fact, since the basketball season started in early October, I am ranked number one college and pro basketball combined, 73 and 50 as we head into the weekend on side selections, up over 73 units of profit. And it continues into next week. By the way, this coming Tuesday, Circle Tuesday in your calendar, February the 13th, day before Valentine's Day, I've got an advanced Valentine's gift for you. I've isolated what might be my strongest basketball play of the season. There's a situational setup, a matchup this coming Tuesday. If everything plays out right this week and we get the right line on Tuesday, of course, could very well be my strongest play, maybe my first 5% release this year in any sport. So once again, a little foreshadowing. Be sure to check back on Tuesday as I have a possibly very strong play lined up in basketball. Yet another reason to get a direct subscription because you never miss any plays. You get them emailed to you instantly. The minute I release them on Wager Talk, every client gets them emailed to them so you can lock in the best number before they move. And I've been seeing it well. Not only ranked number one in basketball this season, number one in the NFL on those sides the last six months, all sports was number one in 20 and two and 2023 combined and all sports football, baseball and basketball side selections combined. And we're off to a great start here in 2024. In fact, 42 and 26 on all sides over the last 33 days as I do this video going back to early January. All right, enough about that. Don't forget, by the way, I had the special February special, just uh, $10 a day. The rest Super Bowl to Super Bowl special this Sunday through next year's Super Bowl 365 day special. For just over three dollars a day just over a dollar play no promo code needed for either but they expire on sunday night this is your last chance to get the rest of february or the full one year super bowl to super bowl all access special all sports every day for a very low price one final note free super bowl contest that's right don't forget about the free plays on my page every day but also the free super bowl contest for the super bowl 58 props i put up 16 of them if you get enough right you can win up to a full year of service for free of my personal best bets and that shortcut you see a QR code on the screen. Now, the idea here was that you're watching this on your laptop. You could scan that with your phone. But then I realized most of you are probably watching this on your phone or your mobile device, your tablet. So you might not be able to scan it. But if you can, scan it. If not, no worries. I have a shortcut for you. wt.buzz slash sbprops. wt 
dot buzz slash SB props. And you see that right on the right hand side there on the screen. So either way, don't forget to enter my free Super Bowl prop contest can win up to a full year, a $2,000 value, and it's free to enter of my personal best bets. All right, let's get to some props here on the Super Bowl. You know, there's thousands of them. First of all, if you're playing the props, be careful. It's one game. I know everyone says that it's one game. Don't overexpose your bankroll. But I want to make a bigger point here. The way you handicap props is going to be pretty much dependent on how you think the game is going to play out. For example, if you think it's going to be a high-scoring shootout, a lot of passing touchdowns, you know, a lot of scoring the over, you're going to have over props, right? If you think it's going to be a grind-out, ugly, low-scoring game, you're going to have a lot more under props. So you have to be careful from a money management perspective not to overextend your bank or overexpose it based on one correlated outcome. So you probably don't want to play everything for a normal unit. You want to back it down if it's correlated. What I want to do in this segment, though, of course, I've got my prop best bet package for my clients at wagertalk.com. But what I want to do in this segment is talk about some of the more public props, the ones that look too good to be true that maybe aren't. And first of all, I recommend you go back and watch Wager Talk today. I guest hosted with Teddy Covers Monday through Friday this week. And in every episode, Teddy broke down some props and I had my thoughts on them as well. I also referenced several times this week uh, the fantastic free prop chart that Ralph Michaels puts up every year on his page at wagertalk.com. Stat Daddy. Human Database, Father of Jeff, The Pen. Go to Ralph's page, ralphmichaelswagertalk.com, and download that free chart. It's the last 14 years of Super Bowls, and it shows you all the prop results for the major props. Uh, one that's very interesting, by the way, the last 13 years, the team that wins the coin toss has deferred. Not a surprise. And the reason I bring that up, because had the Detroit Lions made the Super Bowl, I think they would have elected to receive. And if you could have found a bet, Lions received the opening kickoff, it would have been a great move. But now we don't get that bet. Another bet that would have been great once again had the Lions made the Super Bowl was the first fourth down conversion and attempt bet. Dan Campbell's very aggressive, as everyone knows. The last three years since he became a head coach, no team has attempted and converted more fourth downs than the Lions. But oh, unfortunately, we don't have that one here. Um, but it is a prop that a lot of people like to look at, and that's on Ralph's sheet as well. So check that out. But the first one I want to talk about, which I think is the biggest public square divide prop, is shortest touchdown in the game. Now, recreational players see one and a half listed every year, and they say, how could it possibly, how can you possibly play under one and a half? And it's usually juiced that way as well. So a very square play is over one and a half longest touchdowns. Now, what? look, it might happen in this game. I'm not saying it won't, but I just want to point out to you that the correct side in that prop usually is the under. And like the fade the public premise is that when we have a lot of one-sided action one way, we get value going the other way. And this is a prop that year in and year out is usually historically priced too low. And once again, if you check Ralph's sheet, you see that nine of the last 14 years, the shortest touchdown in the game has been one yard or less. And here's what's amazing. Four of those other five years in which it went over were two or three yard touchdowns. So once again, 12 of the last 14 years, the shortest touchdown has been two yards or less. 13 of the last 14 years, it's been three yards or less. And the longest was eight yards. So once again, it's a very counterintuitive prop. If you're new to sports betting, don't get suckered by it. Under one and a half total yards for the uh, shortest touchdown scored is actually the smart play, yet it seems kind of counterintuitive, and I think that's a sharp square one that I wanted to point out to you. A couple more sharp square ones that also sometimes cash, but normally are not getting you good line value, is the will there be a safety or will there be an overtime? Uh, first of all, there's only been one overtime in 57 Super Bowls, and that one was a fluke. The Falcons blew a 28-3 to lead against the Patriots. So it's really ironic that the only overtime we've ever gotten was one of the biggest blowout games at one point. It's never happened otherwise. Now, yes, this is a competitive game. The point spread is only two. The teams are evenly matched. So it's a little more likely than normal. But once again, the public likes to play the big plus money props. So there is actually value laying the 11-1 to or the 10-1, to whatever these are priced at. So just want to let you know, once again, there's not value playing the yes overtime even though this should be a tight game. Doesn't mean it can't happen. I'm just saying there's no value there. Another one that does not have value is where there'll be a safety. Now, this one really started losing value a couple of years ago because if you remember, we had that span of uh, three years in a row when there was a safety, and that was just incredible. In fact, looking at Ralph's sheet here, I'll pull it up for you right now. That was Super Bowls, um, Super Bowl 41 through, four, I'm sorry, 46 through 48. Uh, that giant Patriot game had one. And then we had one in the uh, Baltimore San Fran game, and then also that Denver Seattle game. If my memory serves, the first score of that game was a safety as well, which is just crazy. Um, it was actually looking. In fact, two of those three games, that Giants uh, Patriots game first score was a safety also, two of the three years. And once again, all this great data is right on Ralph's chart. 
Um, but once again, that was not the norm. It had not happened before. And now we go all the way back over the last, was it eight, nine years? It has not happened since. So once again, not likely there'll be a safety, but especially since it happened in recent history, that plus money price is way too low. So there's actually value with the minus price there. I'm not a huge proponent of laying like 11 to one. Uh, but once again, that is actually what a lot of sharp betters do. So these are some sharp square props that I wanted to point out to you. Shortest touchdown, no safety, no overtime. That's usually the way to go. Um, another one that's interesting as well is will there be a score in the first six minutes of the game? Uh, this is actually in my free prop contest. So I'm going to give you some insight to one of the ones I listed in my free prop contest at wagertalk.com. If you look here in the first six minutes of the game, it always seems kind of tempting to say, yes, there'll be a score. These are going to be high scoring games. Well, it hasn't happened too often. It's only happened four times the last 14 Super Bowls. Ten of the last 14 Super Bowls have not seen a score in the first six minutes of the first quarter. And once again, I think this is also kind of counterintuitive. And keep in mind, this was a prop that used to always be in my best bets back when the Patriots were playing. Patriots barely scored in the first quarter of most Super Bowls with Belichick and Brady. We've kind of gotten out of that era now. In fact, you have to go back to that Falcon game I referenced seven years ago to find the last time we had a Brady-Belichick Super Bowl. We've had six since. This will be the seventh now in a row without them combined. We, of course, had the one Tampa Super Bowl with Brady. Um, but once again, before that, Brady and Belichick were just great low-scoring first quarter, no-score early quarterbacks and, and game planning. But it continues because teams normally don't want to make a mistake early in the big game. Now, we do have two veteran teams, especially the Chiefs here. But still, once again, last year we did have a score in the first six minutes, but we had none the six years before that. So it's still six and one the last seven years. And several times we've had no score till the second quarter. So um, it's a prop that I think also is a little counterintuitive. The sharp money is usually on the no, but the public often thinks it will be a score early in the game. Two other things on the way out here. I want to make this a quick hitter because there's so, so many other great videos here on Wager Talk TV this weekend breaking down the Super Bowl. And I invite you to check all those out. But let's look at a couple of player props real quick. First of all, uh, Travis Kelsey. He's become about as public as possible with the Swifties and all the other media attention. And he's also a superstar, probably a future Hall of Famer, no doubt about it. But I want to point out with the Kelsey props is that I think there's probably not a lot of value left with him now based on recent results. Um, this is a guy that really, I think, is on the back half of his career. I talked about this in the Baltimore um, Chiefs preview, and I mentioned that he probably would underachieve, but he didn't. He had another monster game. In fact, his best game of the season, 11 receptions, 116 yards, and another touchdown. Keep in mind, he had two touchdowns against Buffalo. But then if you look in the previous seven games, going back through the regular season even, he'd had no touchdowns over the previous seven games and had just one touchdown over the previous 10 games combined. So before the Buffalo game, he'd had one touchdown the previous 10 games, and now he's had three the last two playoff games. Yes, they probably look at him here in the big Super Bowl, but the 49ers know that, and I do look for a regression. So I think there's probably some reasons to look to play the Kelsey props under. And I think that's another fade the public angle because the public, I'm sure, in general, likes over props. And I'm sure they're going to like the Kelsey over props. So I wouldn't be afraid to maybe pick your spots and play some Kelsey props under. I definitely uh, would be careful with the overs as you're going to be playing a premium. Another guy you're going to be paying a premium for is Offensive Player of the Year, Christian McCaffrey, the only player in the NFL this year, I believe, with over 2,000 yards from scrimmage. But this is one where I agree with the public. Yes, the McCaffrey numbers are going to probably be inflated. But it's hard not to like him over in rushing yards, especially because keep in mind, the Chiefs have had a fantastic defense and a great pass defense this year. But their run defense at times has been below average statistically. And once again, with the young quarterback, Purdy, you've got to figure they're going to want to run the game, be conservative. And McCaffrey might have some success. So the McCaffrey over rushing yards, I think, makes sense. Um, his overall yardage, scrimmage yards, passing, all that stuff, you can combine it as well. They'll probably do some swing passes to him, some conservative plays there. Uh, but McCaffrey props over, I like. So the two very public guys on each offense, Kelsey and, Mah and uh, McCaffrey, as far as the non-quarterbacks, I do agree with the public. McCaffrey numbers are going to be jacked up a little bit, but I think for good reason. Plus, if you lean San Francisco in the game, he probably gets more rushing yards late in the game if they have the lead. Uh, Kelsey, once again, if they're losing, they might get some extra pass reception. But in the two games he won, he had monster games in the playoffs. But once again, he had vastly underperformed a month or two before that. So I'd be careful with Kelsey, but I did think McCaffrey and the public are right with his over props. All right, that's a lot of information here. I, there's so much other stuff we could look at here, but there's a ton of standalone videos here. I also did a full game breakdown for both side and total here on Wager Talk TV. So check out that video from a couple days ago. Also, all the prop videos as well this weekend. Don't forget, my Super Bowl prop contest is free to enter on my page for everybody. All you need is a Wager Talk ID, and you can win up to a full year, $2,000 value of my best bets. You can scan the QR code that you see on your screen right now, or if you can't scan it, 
no worries. Use shortcut code, type in shortcut code wt.buzz slash sbprops. You see that on the right-hand side there, and that'll take you right to the Super Bowl contest. I also have a quick link on my homepage. That's a great way to get there as well. And when you're on my homepage, be sure to check out the free plays each and every day. I have Saturday night college basketball free play, and then I have a free play for Sunday planned as well. Throughout the week, I post free plays every day and night as well on wagertalk.com. Check out the Super Bowl combo. The one big package gets all of my personal prop best bets for the full game. It's the best way to make some money this Sunday. And don't sleep on basketball, ranked number one since the basketball season became a gun in early October. College and pro hoops combine on all sides, and you don't want to miss it as you can still get that Super Bowl to Super Bowl special this Sunday for just $3 a day or the rest of February if you want a smaller package, just $10 a day. And once again, big play alert, I have a game circled for this Tuesday, which could be the strongest basketball play I've released all season, perhaps my first 5% play of the year. Be sure to check my page on Tuesday for more details. Don't miss out. If you're a direct subscriber, you will get an email to you instantly when it goes out. Hey, thanks for watching. It's been a fun NFL season. Enjoy the big game on Sunday. Once again, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell for instant alerts. I do free play basketball videos all week long as well here on the channel. But most importantly, comment below. Let me know who you'd like in Super Bowl 58, your side, your total, but also your player props. Include some analysis so we can all learn and earn and win together here on Sunday. And include your favorite Super Bowl memory, maybe your favorite team, favorite Super Bowl appetizer, cocktail, anything else you want to talk about the Super Bowl. Comment below. I read them all and I reply back. Let's win together on Wager Talk TV. Enjoy the game. Be sure to enter that free contest on my page right now, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. You can also get to my page quicker, wt.buzz/sm. Follow me on Twitter at Steve Merrill, two R's, one L, at Steve Merrill on Twitter and X. And I also post information and free plays on Instagram. Follow me on IG. And stay tuned right here to Wager Talk TV for more great Super Bowl content coming up next.